Hello, everybody. How is everybody doing? Okay. So I'd love to see some of you guys um, jumping in the chat. So hello, hello, hello. If you have questions, please feel free to type it into the chat. Make a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions, concerns that you might have. So we're live. I'm taking any of your real estate career questions live. We're going to be doing this more regularly. So uh, feel free to jump in. Ask anything that you might want to know about your real estate career. Let me just check the chat over here. And uh, like I said, feel free to ask me about anything. I'm all totally down for any questions that you guys might have. And what I'm going to tell you is this, just so you know, um, some of the things that I've been talking about recently, especially with a lot of uh, new agents, a lot of the uh, folks that I've been working with that have gotten their license, I've been talking about getting out and just doing the business doing the business. So what does that mean? And, uh, and I'm going to tell you something that's really, I think it's so important. Um, I've been looking at some coaches that I follow personally, because guess what? There are people that I follow. There are people that I want to engage with uh, online that I want to take a look at. So uh, what I'm going to tell you is this um, situation is I always, always absolutely love making sure that you guys know what you should be doing next once you get to a point where you have um, you have your license and you want to know how, how you're going to start your business, okay? So I have some really, really, really great questions coming in, and let me just kind of highlight them. So um, this one right here, what I want to do is I want to show this one. Uh, Stu, uh, it, the, uh, it, it is a buyer's market, so low inventory, less sales. That, that's not a buyer's market. That is definitely a seller's market. So what, what we're talking about, whenever we're talking about what market we're in, right now we're in a seller's market because the inventory is tanking, okay? It is tanking. So it is hard to get your buyer's offers accepted. It is hard to get um, inventory out there because here's the thing, even people who are interested in potentially um, selling their homes, they're not because they're fearful of what's going to happen when they do sell it. So that is uh, definitely something that I would say is really a big issue, a big concern. It's a seller's market, and it's something that I will tell you this. Seller's markets are really hard to navigate, and that's why you want to get out there, and you really want to just be – because a lot of you guys start doing this. You get into the field, and you say, I want to start training. I want to start going to training classes. Training is the most important thing to me. Training, 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 okay? And the situation is this. Um, bottom line is, um, you know, uh, right now I would say don't train as much as get out into the field. I, I want to see you guys interacting with your network. I want to see you interacting with people in the community so that you could start generating business for yourself. That's what you need to be doing. You need to be going out there and let me take a look at some other questions that are coming in. Okay. Um, so someone asked, uh, what kind of uh, account could you use for a broker's account? Um, what I will tell you this is this, okay? Um, the bank account has to be a non-interest bearing account, okay? And I'm just kind of managing the chat right now. So mind my, uh, you know, I'm just trying to manage my screen and everything and just kind of make sure that we have everything coming in that makes sense. Okay. Hello, everyone. Alabama here. Roll Tide. <laughs> How we doing? How we doing? Uh, someone said you're a great tutor. Thank you for that. I love the compliments. I, I know you guys love interacting with me. That's why I I am main, making a uh, really, really, really conscious effort to come in here and interact with you guys more often, more frequently. So you are probably going to see more of these. Um, and let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments if you actually want to uh, see this on a daily basis. I might actually just come on board and just kind of uh, jump in the YouTube, jump in the Facebook group and just kind of uh, say hello to everyone. Just kind of give you a, a little a daily motivational thing. Maybe do a little dance, do a little boogie boogie, <laughs> have a little fun, um, and uh, get you guys off and started on your day. Um, so, oh my gosh, 
you got to someone said they have to take retake their test they haven't done it they haven't retried since december listen it's very discouraging when you have to take your test over and over and over again but what i'll tell you is this there's a light at the end of the tunnel because this is an amazing career there's a lot a lot of things that you could do and here's what i'm going to tell you i know that i have uh down below the link uh www.chatwithstew.com so if you go there you could actually schedule a quick 15 minute call with me i'd be more than happy to answer any personal one to one questions you have about finding a broker about um, you know, how you get your business started, things like that. So, uh, yeah, 100%. And I'll tell you this, um, I try to be as honest with you guys as humanly possible because it's something that, um, bottom line is this, I, I think that you have to really, the, the, everyone has to go to the right broker for them. They have to start their business with the right people. And that's so important. That's why I take the time out of my day to just sit here, talk to you guys, kind of do a little one-on-one -on -one, um, and, and give you any kind of TLC that you guys might have as far as, you know, questions, concerns, burning desires. So um, that is the situation there. And someone said, yeah, just a matter of the way the words or questions are worded. Oh, man. Yeah, the questions are worded really. So here's the thing. Let me actually rephrase. Let me actually say this. Um, the questions aren't worded super, super difficult. They're more straightforward than you actually think they are. Okay. You, they're, they're, they're more straightforward than you actually think they are. So what I will tell you is this. Um, bottom line is, let me get my chat over here. Um, bottom line is this. The questions are a little more straightforward than most students give themselves credit for on the test. Don't don't make these questions into something they're not. Don't make them into this big hollow blue where you sit there and go, oh, my God, these questions are so difficult. Um, and, and the situation is this. You, you overdo it on the question just because you think it's actually harder than it is. So question came in. Uh, an agent lists a property by advertising it was waterfront, but it was actually walking distance to water. Is it legal? Yeah, I don't see anything illegal about that. I've gotten that question several times from students. I don't see any illegal illegality with it. Worst, it's misrepresentation. Um, but since you could kind of see it, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's misrepresentation. I, I don't think that at all. So that's that's my situation there. That's how I feel about that question. Um, but yeah, so it, it's something that you guys. I know you're. I know a lot of you are working on getting the test. Uh, getting to pass the test. And that's why I don't mind taking a test question or two. Um, but if you have any real estate career questions, you know, let me know because I always love answering those. Those are things that, you know, I answer, I answer real estate exam questions all day long. I'm going to be doing it um, in private tutoring sessions. So I always like to, you know, make some of these times available for you guys. If you have, uh, you know, um, if you have any questions, my webinar made you pass the exam. No, it was that hard work that you put in. Give yourself credit. I mean, guys, you know, I come out here, I do my thing, um, and I always try to help you out. But give yourself some credit. You, you, you did good. You know, you, you, you did your studying. You did what you had to do. You know, kudos on you. You know, so give yourself a little bit of credit there in regards to that. Um, but I'm glad that the webinars helped. That's one of the reasons why we do them. Um, so all my webinars basically have moved over to the prep agent channel. So if you aren't a prep agent member, um, then what I'm going to tell you is this, um, the situation is going to be, um, bottom line, you should be a prep agent member. You should be going in there and, uh, doing the webinars all the time. Uh, Mervet, let's see. We said, uh, what kind of bank account can the broker use for earnest money? Um, I said that a little earlier. Um, the situation is this, um, that is going to be a non-interest bearing escrow account. That's the only thing that they could do. Can't be interest bearing. Okay. Stu just wanted to pop in and thank you for all your amazing help. I passed my test in Florida two weeks ago. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's awesome. So, uh, congrats, congrats on that. And if you need help finding a broker, if you haven't already, listen, if you passed two weeks ago, you should have a broker. Okay. You should have a broker. But what I'll tell you is this, if you need a broker, you need help get figuring out what your next step is, you know, definitely go to www.chatwithstew.com. I'd be more than happy to take some time out of my day to help you get onto the next step in your career. So let's take a look at some of these other ones. Uh, so someone said, Ooh, this is a good one. I've been licensed since November and I haven't gotten any deals yet. I've been doing open houses, cold calling, sending magazine mailers and still no deal. What would you recommend, um, in or advice to, uh, so I recommend what I refer to as the three by three. If you are not spending three hours a day, um, three times a week, 
cold calling and 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 uh, and doing those activities, I rec I recommend that. You should be doing a three by three, um, even maybe a four by four. You know, actually, no, not a four by four, but a three by four. You know, where you're doing it for four days. Um, bottom line is just do more of the activities. If there are no deals, then you should be plugging more time into the activities. Okay, so basically, if you're putting aside forty hours a week to real estate and you're sitting there and you're saying, okay, there are no deals, and forty hours a week should be of prospecting, um, changing, getting things done. So, and here's the thing. If you do those things, you should be seeing some appointments, especially since November. So I think that what I would do is I would really take a hard look at like, what are you, um, you know, uh, what are you going to be doing as far as your activities, as far as your daily activities? Okay. So that's something that uh, I, I would tell you is going to be a great thing. So uh, I have to see a couple other people. Someone from Facebook said, uh, I'm still struggling. Okay. Um, so I'm still struggling with the test. It's look, it's not easy. It's not easy. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, this is what I'll tell you. Someone else said they need to put in a lot of hours. You do need to put in a lot of hours with this, even, even with the business. And look, there's times there was years that I've been, you know, not doing well. Business hasn't been coming as, as, uh, as well as it should have been. It's a situation that I will tell you this 100%. You really want to make sure that uh, you're really trying to get yourself in a situation where you're setting yourself up for success as much as possible. You know, so that is definitely uh, one of the things there. So someone said, Shelly said, I'm with EXP. Love it. Yeah, great company. Great company. Great company. I've been with uh, EXP, Coward Williams. I've been with them all. Uh, fantastic. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So. Uh, yeah, then let me just take a look and see if there was any that I missed. What is the easiest for a dual agency? Confidentiality, loyalty, obedience, disclosure. Um, none of them, none of them are easy for a dual, a dual agent. You know, dual agents have is the hardest one to actually do. Um, dual agency is where you have the most compromise as far as your, uh, fiduciary duties are concerned. So none of them, that's not, that wouldn't be a good question for a test. That's probably not how it was worded. Um, so something missing there, some secret sauce missing in that question. So that would be the question. That would be the situation there. Now, um, something else I want to tell you guys too, uh, you know, don't worry too much about what brokerage you pick. I think that a lot of people do. They, they put so much, so much on the brokerage. Um, just do it. Just pick one. Rip it off like a Band-Aid. Um, I've been with 13 brokers. 13. Okay. Um, and I will tell you this. Okay. Um, bottom line is there's not one perfect one. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still trying to sit here. And, and, and every time I think I get better, uh, I think I do. Um, but bottom line is there's a lot of brokerages that just weren't the right fit for me at the right time. I, and I, and I think too, like, you know, maybe I should have went back to some, you know, um, maybe I should have done, uh, different things in regards to how I approached. Maybe it was me. And I'll tell you this, you know, some of it was me. Some of it was that I wasn't the right fit for that brokerage at that time, you know? Uh, so bottom line is this, you could change your brokerage at any time. So if you sit there and say, okay, um, I'm going to pick the brokerage. Just do it because I'll tell you this. No client that I've ever worked with has ever said to me, oh, thank God you're with Remax. I was worried. <laughs> no one's ever said that. They work with me because they want to work with me. Um, people work with me on the real estate exam prep because uh, they want to work with me on the real estate exam prep, stuff like that. So that's the situation there. Someone else said prep agent is a number one best money I ever spent. Bam. Excellent. Love hearing it. Uh, yeah, we work really hard at the prep agent team. Um, it, it's something that, you know, everyone there, me, Cynthia, Joe, love helping you guys out, love doing what we do. So glad that you really saw the val uh, value in it. Um, what dialer would you recommend? Red X. Uh, Red X and Mojo is definitely the situation there. Um, that is the situation there. Um, so uh, let's take a look and see. Um, yeah, I would recommend Mojo, um, Red X. If you guys want, I could actually send out. If you uh, set up any kind of calls with me, like I said, use the www.chatwithstu.com, um, and I'd be more than happy to set up 
uh, you know, give you uh, links and stuff like that. So, and I'm actually going to put that in there. Make sure that's up on the screen. Boom. www.chatwithstew.com. And again, that's going to be Mojo Dialer is the one I would recommend with Red X. That is just a, a great combination, um, I think, in my opinion. And uh, I think that just dial, just dial, just dial, just dial. Some people are not cold calling people. I'll tell you this. Joe over at Prep Agent is not a cold calling guy. Um, I, I'm a little more old school in my approach. I think that so here's my mentality and just follow me on this. Um why pay someone for leads when I could literally get them myself? You know, um, that's the situation there. Why pay for leads when I could go get them myself? So, so many people pay Zillow, um, pay realtor.com, pay all these kind of sites. And I go, why? Why are you doing that? What, what's, what's the point? What's the point when I could just, you know, give me the phone number, give me the phone, give me, give me, give me. I got, I got fingers, I got ears. And I got a mouth. I'm going to use it. Now, here's the thing. You know, you're not going to be the best at the phones when you first start. Um, when you go to your first appointments, you're not going to be the best, uh, the best, uh, you know, uh, pre presenter. You know, I expect you to stumble. Look, when I first did my first real estate class and I taught that, I wasn't the best, too. I wasn't the version of it that you guys get now. So let me just take a sippy, sippy of water. Excuse me, A and W diet cream soda, zero sugar cream soda. It's delicious. It's delicious. So uh, let's talk about um, <laughs> some other things. Uh, yeah. So you know, uh, Tammy said, "Wow, what a great surprise! Surprise, I'm here." Yeah, I'm going to be doing this more often. Um, I think that actually uh, the the situation is going to be this. Uh, I think I might be doing this for um, probably um a, a maybe everyday kind of thing um so i think that you'll be probably seeing me around like the uh 11 a.m eastern standard time slot i think i'm gonna try how it works see how if i could do this on a regular basis just come on with you guys for 15 20 30 minutes answer any questions do you know any good broker to start with in palm springs california please yes um go chat with stew.com i'll hook you up i know a good i know a good broker out there um but i don't want to spill the beans but i also want to make sure it's the right one for you so that's why i say and that's why i tell you guys if you do want to have that conversation with me um i actually have my business partners out in uh california so uh if you want to have that conversation with me we'll talk we'll see if it's the right fit for you and we'll go from there okay what is the main question that an agent should ask when interviewing uh, a new broker so when interviewing, uh, you know, uh, a new broker, bottom line is, uh, you have to see what works for you, what your goals are, you know? Um, and I think that's the biggest thing. Like a lot of agents think that, you know, the broker should be giving them, like they focus on like all these different things, like, Oh, give me training. Oh, give me that. Oh, give me this. Um, you know, in my prep agent, uh, webinar this morning, I, uh, I spoke mainly about getting out there and swinging the bat and actually getting out there and just interacting with people. Um, and bottom line is this, you really have to just do it. You have to get out there. Like a lot of people think, Oh, what's the most important thing to you? Training. Um, my business partner, I love the story that he tells, you know, um, I love the story he tells and he tells us all the time. He was, uh, so David Serpa, he's, uh, out in California and uh, David said, uh, you know, he was uh, he served in the Marine Corps and he uh, <laughs> never forget. He went to uh, he went to Keller Williams. That was his first that was his first start. It was his love, his passion. Um, I was with Keller Williams, too. Uh, and what he did was this, uh, you know, he sat down in a training class and they said, OK, you have to get through this training. You have to do this, 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 and this. He goes, OK, how much are you paying me? And they said, well, nothing, but this is a training you have to do. He goes, okay, I need money. And they said, well, then you have to sell something. He goes, okay, then I'm going to go sell something. And they said, but you haven't done the training. He goes, yeah, you don't understand. I'm broke. <laughs> he said, he goes, you don't understand. I'm broke. Like He was like, I, don't have, I need money. Second month in the business, he made $35,000. It was more than he made um, when he was fighting overseas more than he made in a year fighting overseas. So he said, uh, yeah, he said it was fantastic. He said, you know, I loved it. So that's why I tell you guys, you know, you focus so much on what training does the brokerage offer? What training 
Guess what? What support do they offer to get you out on your fanny? Just kind of slap the behind and get you out there. You know, Stu, I'm a, I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I'm like, hey, what do you need to get yourself out there? That's really what I want to tell you. Uh, someone said in the chat, EXP, Coward Williams, Remax, doesn't matter. Uh, guys, it's you as an agent that matters and what you do every day to touch to reach out to people. I know uh, I I'm still struggling, but not giving up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Listen, uh, you're also in a tough market, too. So if you need help, like I said, you know, sign up with the chat with stew.com. OK, and I could ask you some questions. I could see what you got going on, see what's happening. Um, so let's take a look and see. Um, so someone asked me, which brokerage am I with now? Um, <laughs> a loaded question. Um, and I think it comes, I, I think I have to, I, I think that I have to explain it with some context. Um, because I, I always talk about how you guys need to find the right brokerage for you based on your goals. Um, so long story short, I went from, so I've been with Keller Williams. I, I went to a Remax, uh, and I love my Remax office. My Remax office, I absolutely loved. Um, I was with Redfin. Okay, Redfin.com absolutely loved Redfin. Okay, um, and now I'm with uh, EXP, and I, I'll tell you one of the reasons why. And this is the reason for me. Okay, uh, what happened was this: at Remax, I was at one office. Okay, and we were one of the biggest ones in my state. Uh, so it, it was a, it was a big Remax. Um, after about a year though, it was the same trainers, the same people educating and the same opportunities. There was no growth outside of that. And I'm reaching out to people. I'm working with people across the country. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to pair up with and align myself with people who will help me grow. Because I want to learn how to be a better speaker. So if I want to learn how to be a better speaker and I'm the best speaker in that office, how do I do it? Okay. How do I do it? Right. New Jersey. Yes. Yes. I'm a Jersey boy. Just so you know. Um, I don't put that out there that often because I don't want you guys to feel alienated because like I said, I am nationwide, but uh, I'm Jersey homegrown. Okay. I I'm Jersey grown. Uh, that's where I started. Uh, I'm New Jersey, New York, you know. East Coast kind of guy, but uh, I work with a lot of people. Like I said, my business partner's out in California. Um, so uh, David, he's in the Facebook group. So if you are a Facebook user, uh, David Serpa, he is one of the admins in the um, real estate exam prep group. So he's absolutely phenomenal. Great California guy. And like I said, if you want to schedule a time to meet with me and him, you know, just go to chat with stew.com. Okay. And I'd be able to set up, you could, you could do that as much as you want. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't anything. And, I, and here's the thing. Something else that you should understand is that people who are really hungry to recruit you, uh, be skeptical of it. You know, I'm the kind of guy that, look, I rather have less people <laughs> with me, but have the right people then have people who are going to come on with me just because they have a pulse and then them not be successful. And then I get a bad name. I get a bad reputation. I don't want that. I don't want to be the guy who's, uh, it's one of the reasons I didn't go to EXP for a long time. Uh, it, because what happened was everyone was screaming EXP, EXP, EXP. And I didn't like it. I was just like, Oh man, you guys are pushing this stuff on me way too hard. Um, and it's funny, I David, I, I mention this all the time. David was someone that I just spoke to because he's actually an author, public speaker. So I looked up to David. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, the situation is this. Um, David was someone who never, ever, 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 ever pushed me to, you know, have the EXP conversation. And everyone else was. Everyone else was. And... Finally, what happened was he said to me, he said, hey, um, you know, well, I actually said to him, I said, hey, I said, why haven't you why haven't you recruited me? Aren't I good enough? And he goes, no, he said, that's not what our relationship is about. He said, I just want to give, give and give and give. And that was it. He was like basically telling me how to, you know, we, we had great conversations for like three to four years um, with him having no expectation of me coming on board. No, nothing, no, anything. And then finally, like I wanted to grow. I was stagnant in my career. And that's when I took the leap of faith because I saw all the opportunities. And here's the thing. I haven't even started really uncovering them um, because it's I'm very early on in my EXP journey. So that's that's my small little blurb. And like I said, because I don't like putting it out there because, again, I, I always felt like EXP recruiters and people like that, they get a bad rap. And I, I honestly, I don't like I said, I personally don't 
want to be someone who's like exp 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 and then all of a sudden like because it's like i said that's just not me I, and also too i don't want anyone working with me that um you know, uh, that, that, that doesn't want to work with me. Unlike that person who just typed in, I would love for you to be my sponsor, Stu. Yeah. Uh, listen, go to chat with I'd be more than happy to talk to you. And like I said, and that's what I want to have. I want to have a situation where if you want to work with me and you want, because here's the thing, I'll tell you this, um, as a sponsor, I'm looking to, um, spend money on my people that I sponsor. Like, cause bottom line is if you're going to make me money, I'm going to make you money. Then let's put money into it. Then let's put money behind it. I put, uh, I'm setting my people up with, uh, concierge services, things like that. And that's you know, honestly, that's what your brokers should be doing. Your brokers should be investing in you because if your broker's just bringing you on board and then just basically going, have a great one, then they're not really a great broker. They're not really a great sponsor. They're not really a great anything. They're not a nothing. You know, I'm looking to look, this is my business. My business is this. And actually, you know, that goes to, I know I'm talking a lot about me. Um, but I think that sometimes you do, you do need to talk about you. Um, so <laughs> teams do crew powered by exp. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, uh, this, this is what I'll tell you. Um, I, and I don't want this to turn into an exp, webinar, but I do want to talk a little bit about me and what my mentality is. And I think that you could apply this to any brokerage. If a brokerage is just going to bring you on and not spend money on you and not invest in you and also to not talk about, hey, what are your goals? Then I think that the brokerage might not be the right fit for you because here's the thing. If you're doing less talking in the meeting than they are, and they're just kind of telling you why it's so awesome, why it's amazing, why it's this, why it's that. And you're just kind of going, oh, man, maybe that's for me. And they're not really asking you, hey, what is your goal? What is your five-year goal? What is your 10-year goal? Um, I just had a talk today with somebody, and they were talking about one of my favorite REMAX offices in New Jersey, um, one that's in East Brunswick with Carl Sanfilippo. I love Olivier and Carl. I think they're absolutely probably some of the most fabulous brokers in the industry, period, hands down, okay? Um, and then she was like, yeah, but I want a situation where I could have passive income. And I said, okay, how are you going to do that at Remax? Like I said, are you going to start investing in real estate? Are you going to start doing things? And basically she was like, well, you know, um, the situation is this, uh, bottom line is, uh, bottom line is this. Uh, I said, I don't see how you do that at Remax. That was one of the reasons I left. I was like, I, I want to build a business where I'm basically going to be able to um, focus on, and that's something that I kind of shifted gears in, in the last five years, I realized that I was not a real estate agent because what happened was my education, obviously you guys realize <laughs> I'm a really good teacher and a really good trainer and a really good speaker. So what I was struggling with is this, I wanted to be a better um, trainer, a better teacher. And I wanted to basically make myself available to my people more times than not. I was running into situations where, um, I was constantly being pulled away from the business. I was being pulled away from, you know, teaching and I was only teaching like part-time. That was like my side pocket money. That was like my, uh, you know, vacation money, my mad money, I would call it, you know, that's where I would buy my Christmas gifts with. So like, it was a nice chunk of change. It was enough that I would never leave it but it was never what I did. Like if you ask me what I did, I would say I manage real estate agents and I sell real estate. Now, if you ask me what I did five years later, I'm an instructor, educator, trainer, and I get people started with their business and I help them. That's what I do. I get you from where you are going to think about going, okay, this is my career in real estate. We build a great bond. I fill in the gaps where your schools maybe haven't, you know, along with Joe, Cynthia, prep agent, you know, and the other tools that we have. Um, and then what I do is I get you to pass and then I point you in the right direction. Bottom line is if that's with me, absolutely welcome you with open arms. You know, I'd be more than happy to help you. I'd be more than happy to explain things with you. Or if that's with someone else that's more local to you that might be, um, you know, more aligned with what your goals are. That's what it has to be. It has to be aligned with what your goals are. That's why I left Remax. I left a great Remax office. Um, and as I said, I think you heard me say really great things about some of these other brokerages. Um, there's some that I think are pirate ships. I won't say say who. Um, there's some that I don't like. Uh, but like the major ones that you're probably considering, and I think local brokerages too are absolutely bees knees. I mean, they're like the lifeblood of the real estate industry. I, I love small brokerages too. Um, and each one's unique. 
you know, each one's unique. Um, my mother is uh, a real estate agent and I told her to go to, uh, a, a, a nice local brokerage because that's what she needed. She needed a nice local brokerage. Um, I thought that, you know, it was just not the, what happened was this, the EXP world wasn't right for her. <laughs> it just wasn't, she wasn't going to be someone that went into that. Wasn't she needed to go into a physical office, see things, touch things. She needed to go. I got this. I got that. I'm doing this thing. I'm doing that thing. She needed to feel touch and really interact. Okay. She needed high level touch. So I recommended to her to go to another company. I said, Hey, you know, I said, this is a great fit for you. And she's super happy. And here's the thing. I have great relationships with that company too. That's why I recommended them. They're absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's a small little brokerage, a little franchise, uh, for next home, which is a nationwide brand. Um, and the local office though, in central New Jersey is bees knees, Mwah, chef's kiss. I love it. I love them. Um, uh, Alan Burns and, uh, basically giving a shout out to, uh, to them, you know, they, they, they run a phenomenal office out in Howell, New Jersey. But again, that all goes to the, uh, honestly, that all goes to how each office is run because a lot of these franchises too are, um, very much so they're very much so uh, situations that each one might be different. So you might go to one Keller Williams office, be absolutely phenomenal. And then you go to another one is a totally different thing. And someone asked me, can I break down the money at EXP? Uh, what I'll tell you is this. I don't want to give a total rundown breakdown because again, I do not want this to be an EXP conversation. However, what I do is I'll encourage you, you know, www.chatwithstew.com schedule some time with me and uh, I can answer any questions that you might have um, and get you all the information that you would want. So I'd be more than happy to answer those questions there. But honestly, um, like I said, I don't want to bore you guys with that kind of stuff. Um, and I I'll tell you this, it's something that personally, there's a lot of opportunities out there. You just have to align it with what your goals are. That's why that's why I left a really good Remax office. That's why I left a really good situation um, because I want to grow further. And the opportunities for growth for me just weren't at my Remax office where I'm hearing the same trainers, the same coaching, the same things every single time. And, and doesn't mean that it's going to be bad. And I'll tell you this, like, uh, you know, you can see the music instruments in the background. I I'm a big musician. Uh, I, I think that a lot with, uh, with, um, music too, and my career in music, I I've played several instruments. I'm a drummer. I'm a bass player. I'm a saxophone player. And I remember with drums, I was with this one teacher that, uh, absolutely phenomenal teacher um very technical really good um i started to plateau though i started to plateau and i was like what do i do and he even told me he said you know you gotta I think you gotta spread your wings you gotta go to another teacher you know you're plateauing where i could take you so i went to another teacher and i spent about a year and a half two years with him and it took me to another level. It just changed up. I got a different perspective. And it wasn't that the first instructor wasn't was, was bad. It was that I outgrew that. I outgrew that situation. So I think there's a lot of times too where you guys might find that throughout your real estate career, like where you start might not be where you end. It might be. But chances are you're going to probably change grow. And that's the whole thing. You should be growing. So if your brokerage doesn't offer you the breath to kind of grow and the scope and the way you want to grow, then you're, you're by design, you're going to have to go elsewhere. You're going to have to go elsewhere. So, um, what I want to do is this, I want to see if there are any other last minute questions. Okay. Um, so I see a whole bunch of stuff coming in. Um, you guys look, I, I hope you like this. If you do like this, give me a thumbs up because I do want to make sure that we do this for you maybe more often. Um, get you some information, get you some stuff, uh, answer some of your questions. And like I said, if you haven't already, go to chatwithstew.com. Um, so let's see this one. Feedback, one realty legend, 100% commission. I don't know much about it, um, but... Any of the 100% commission companies I'm always skeptical of. Uh, is this live really? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> like, yeah, like that's, I'm really live. Uh, that was funny. So, um, listen, what I'll tell you is this schedule some time with me because, again, I don't charge you for that. That's like a fifth. That's like basically, I don't have like office hours where I can sit there and say, oh, call my cell phone. 
and like you could you could reach out to me. No, I'm usually in meetings. I'm usually doing stuff like this. Um, but what happens is if you go to the chat with stew.com and lets you put like a time in on my schedule so that I could actually literally say, okay, this is when I'm going to speak with you via Zoom and we're going to chat and we're going to do things and you'll get whatever information you need, um, you know, answered for you. So yeah, that's why I say do that. You know, that's like a little 15 minute, like, hey, how you doing? You know, kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I'm doing prep agent at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard. So, yeah, I have to get going with that. So uh, <laughs> I have to start prepping that. Uh, good afternoon, Stu and Stu crew. I'm a longtime listener, but first time here. I just finished my classes. I got to take the test. Boom. John, if you need any help, feel free to reach out. Like I said, I might be doing this more often where I just kind of come on, just kind of look at the camera, just gaze into it and just be like, hey. So I'll answer some questions. Like I said, this is me kind of just having fun too. Um, because I like talking to you guys. I like hearing this stuff. I like seeing what's going on, uh, what's happening, all that kind of stuff. So um, with that being said, this is about 35 minutes. What I want to do is this. I want to thank everyone for coming on. Um, I'll take any last questions, last minute questions though. Um, because like I said, I am doing a 7 p.m. Pacific, uh, Eastern Standard Time uh, webinar uh, over at Prep Agent. So if you aren't a Prep Agent member yet, um, sign up. It's something that if you're still looking to pass your exam, definitely do that. Uh, also, too, what I'll tell you is this. Um, like I said, I, I just like coming on here, answering any questions you have. If you do want to schedule some time with me, www.chatwithstu.com. You could put something on my calendar. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, other than that... I'm just giving you a minute or so. Brian said, I'm studying for the test in Denver, Colorado. How long does it take the average student to pass, get through the courses? Courses. <laughs> Listen to me. I can't even talk now. I got some of this delicious cream soda and I can't even talk. So how long does it take? It depends. Depends on how much time you have to dedicate to it. Um, I always say like two months is like, is like my favorite time frame. But that's really up to you guys. So um, don't cram, though. That's what I always say. Don't cram. Don't do that. Um, but studying, I'd say give yourself two months. You know, um, And some people, it takes a little longer. Some people, it takes shorter. Some people pass on their first try. Some people don't. Actually, let me rephrase that. Most people don't pass on their first try. Most people. That's why I have a job. <laughs> so you know, listen, listen. <laughs> bottom line is this. Um if this was an easy test, I'd be flipping burgers somewhere. Um, I'd be a lot better at playing bass. <laughs> I'd be doing something else. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be doing this. Um, so, like I said, I just want to say thank you guys um, very, 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 very much from the bottom of my heart for coming on with me today. And um, if you do have any questions, like I said, feel free to reach out. If not, I'm going to end this stream right now. You guys have a great one. I'm going to see you real soon.